Hello, tonight I would like to show you the Morgan Library renovation by Renzo Piano. Uh, Renzo Piano's renovation is one of the four parts of the project. You can uh, see it right behind me, it is uh, made out of uh, steel and glass mainly. It's a perfect adaptation to the existing buildings. Um, you will see later inside that uh, the building or the whole library is made out of four parts. There are three historical buildings, one brownstone house, then an extension of the historical library by McKimita and White, and another building on uh, the corner. He adapted a design which is the complete opposite of the historical buildings. While we have the historical buildings which are designed with uh, heavy stone, massive, very neoclassical, inspired by uh, Renaissance buildings, Renzo Piano does exactly the opposite. He designed something light, transparent, permeable that allows us to walk through it and to access any other building. So in a way, the project establishes very impressive dialogue between a historical architecture and this uh, contemporary uh, project that he completed in the year 2006. We will start our visit to the Morgan Library from the historical building designed by the architect Charles McKim from the office of McKim, Meat and White, completed in the year 1906. The building was designed in neo-renaissance style as you can see from this side facade with the entrance inspired by Venetian style. We start from the studio, the rotunda so called, which is the first space where we enter before we access the actual uh, library. The building, the roof of the studio is a representation of the sky. We'll see how different that it is from the actual sky which Renzo Piano positions in his new intervention. From the rotunda we can access the main gallery or the library which you see here uh, with uh, the books placed on the walls. It is again a neo-renaissance interior with uh, decoration of the time and it has some interesting details for example this uh, bronze uh, mezzanine level where we can see the books and access them on the second level. This bronze um, mezzanine level as we see here has glass floors and this glass floor is the big exception from what the rest of the neo-renaissance interior is. We will see how the glass is later implemented by Renzo Piano in his renovation. From this uh, library space, we can go to uh, the studio of the librarian, which is right now an exhibition of uh, um, rare objects, sculptures and manuscripts. There we find this angel, which is trying to fly, but it's too heavy to do it. From there, we access the office of um, the owner of the library, Pierpont Morgan. That was his studio, that was the place where he used to read the books or meet with his uh, colleagues and partners. It has a vault, this hidden locked space where he used to keep the rare manuscripts and we see his portrait right above the fireplace. From there we can go through and access the main building of Renzo Piano. Uh, Renzo Piano completed his renovation in 2006 and as you can see the building fits quite well in the context. He separates from the historical buildings with uh, this uh, glass facade right here behind the tree and then positions the main entrance uh, in between the brown house and uh, the stone building. The new building takes the same colors, the white colors of the stone building on my uh, left side and lifts it above ground. So essentially the entire renovation of uh, Renzo Piano is based on this idea of uh, lightness and transparency. 
His design is very minimal. It fits perfectly in uh, the context, as you will see from the inside, and respects very much the buildings that uh, it connects. He was inspired by the idea of the Italian plaza, so essentially the interior uh, which uh, uh, he designed inside is envisioned as a big uh, public space which connects the existing buildings. In order to understand the work of Renzo Piano and his intervention in the Morgan Library, we shall look at a text by Italo Calvino, an Italian writer who wrote a book called Six Memos for the Next Millennium in occasion to his lectures for Harvard University. Calvino starts with the first chapter, Lightness, saying, I will devote my first lecture to the opposition between lightness and weight and will uphold the values of lightness. This doesn't mean that I consider the virtues of weight less compelling, but simply I have more to say about lightness. He concludes by saying, we shall face the new millennium without hoping to find anything more in it than what we ourselves are able to bring it to it. Lightness, for example, whose virtues I have tried to illustrate here. The second chapter is quickness, the third chapter exactitude, defined by him as first a well-defined and well-calculated plan for the work in question. Second, an evocation of clear, incisive, memorable visual images. Third, a language as precise as possible, both in choice of words and in expression of the subtleties of, of thought and imagination. Fourth chapter, visibility. Fifth chapter, multiplicity. And final chapter, consistency. Therefore, we can use this uh, text by Calvino as a comparison between the two projects, Renzo Pianos as the lightness of his intervention in relationship to the weight of the previous three historical buildings, and we see the dialogue between them as we enter inside the building. As we enter the building, the new renovation by Renzo Piano, we go through a lobby which is lower than the rest of the building. It's compressed because it hosts uh, two more levels right above it, as we saw in this box right above the entrance. From there, we can go to the plaza, this main space where we find the cafeteria spaces, big public space where they do concerts. And from there, we can either go to the exhibition space on the sides, to the historical library, or to the upper levels where the offices are. The whole uh, building and the whole intervention is very light. It's built with these uh, steel structure, uh, similar to the pillars of the Barcelona Pavilion with this cruciform shape. The architect exposes uh, every structural element that constitutes the roof. So in a way, it's a very uh, direct tectonic expression of how the building is being made. The plaza is, is very uh, light and the uh, sunlight enters from every possible side, from the sides, from the roof, as he did in other uh, museums, and we have sunlight during the entire day. So in a way we have the feeling that we are in the exterior, but we are in a, a protected space in the interior. This well for the staircase, or the staircase is a connection between the lower floors where we find the auditorium and the upper floors where we have the entrance. As you can see, it barely touches the ground. It's suspended from the slab of the ground floor. So it's floating ab above ground and it lets the light go through it. The elevators are also transparent. Uh, the roof of the elevators is made out of this steel grid which lets the light in and uh, their protection on the sides is made out of glass. So uh, again, very transparent space, very transparent details, minimum, minimal structure and minimal uh, building materials. From this lower floor, uh, we can either go to some the auditorium and some of the exhibits, or we can go back up to the uh, ground floor and the large public space. The staircase conduces us up 
and interestingly from the lower floor we can see all the way through the four floors of the library so we see even if we're in the basement we see up to the roof and we see the sunlight coming through the building the lobby is very spacious and very bright during old times it welcomes the visitors and it invites them to stay to study the exhibit from here we can go back to the exterior after having enjoyed the beauty of the interior space and this dialogue between the light space of the new intervention and the weight of the historical buildings. As you saw, the project is, is very successful and I invite you to definitely visit it when you come to New York. I wanted to show you this uh, smaller scale building and also an adaptation in a historical context which you can compare to some of the other projects which we'll see in uh, the course. Renzo Piano, very successful architect and certainly the most uh, renowned Italian architects around the world has, uh, has designed this uh, project and it is a perfect addition to the existing library and fits very well into the context. You see how contemporary architecture, not something that stands by itself, but it's something that can establish a dialogue rather successfully with historical context. And by positioning itself in this historical context, in fact, it reinforces the beauty of the design of the historical buildings. At the same time, it uh, brings some new value. It brings something new to the dialogue and to the discourse of architecture that it participates in. I hope you enjoyed the visit to the Morgan Library. Make sure you respond to the questions in relation to this project. I would like to ask you, how do you evaluate this intervention by Renzo Piano and what other projects you can compare it to in terms of insertion of a new contemporary building in a historical context like this?